day one, video one, CEDH on Magic Online. I'm super excited. I happen to be trying out this deck in CEDH right now. Figure, okay, here we are online. It's Krark, Silas, Partners. Silas ran, of course, giving you the blue-black color identity in your command zone. Krark being the meat here. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, that spell bounces to your hand. But if you win the flip, you copy that spell. Some Krark Silas decks, and by some I really mean Ken's, Ken Bauman's, focuses on double or nothing, max 50% chance of just getting two. I've got some of the copiers in here that will copy the trigger, which means, well, you'll see, hopefully, you know, 25%, you get nothing. 50% of the time, you'll get a copy and the spell back to your hand, and only 25% of the time, you get double spell. So that's why Ken doesn't go that way in Grixis, but that's what the typical... Krark deck will do. Typically, Krark is a blue-red deck with Sakashima. Long story, I have the other Sakashima to also potentially copy Krark out of the 98. If you're brand new to CDH, this might not be the... I mean, who cares? Maybe you want to dive in. I'm not going to stop you. But this is not necessarily entry-level content. Um, check out Playing With Power and their channel for other content and, and other sources of intro-level content might exist on you know, there's all kinds of channels out there and resources. There's written articles. The top deck.gg folks probably have some stuff. Anyways, um, maybe I can find something and put it in the comments as to where to get started. If you want to just get started watching, I mean, that's certainly not an invalid way to get started and I'm happy to do that. Let me jump in the queue. I don't know if it's going to take me forever to, and I'm going to have to, oh, it doesn't tell you how many are in the queue. There's only 22 people who have joined. This is day one. So I may need to pause. Well, oh, let me, let me work on the rest of the deck tech while that we wait for that. So I don't know when it's going to fire. I, th I was hoping maybe it would say like two people in the queue, three, but it doesn't. So I might get stuck in there for a while. It's just day one early issue. But essentially with Krark, Grixis is almost always looking to sort of combo off and you have your Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, Brain Freeze type of things that are typical. You have Thassa's Oracle in combination with Demonic Consultation and Tainted Pack. You are a Grixis deck. You've got sort of win conditions in a can, like Mnemonic Betrayal. You're even going as far as playing Yawgmoth's Will in a deck this that's going this hard. You've got cards that are really not cuttable, essentially, in a in a blue deck, a Aristic Study, um, a Force of Will, a Mental Misstep. Some of these tools get better with Krark, some don't. Mental Misstep is awesome because it's going to... Even if it, anything that's free is really high value. That's why you'll even see Slaughter Pact and Pact of Negation. Because you can essentially guarantee that you're going to get two copies of that effect. Even if you, with just Krark out. If you lose the flip, it'll go back to your hand. You played again for zero. If you win the flip, now you've got two. If you have a copier out there, let's say you do have your Harmonic Prodigy, the best, the cheapest and the best of the copiers. So it's going to make Krark trigger twice. Well, you're fairly likely to get to do it a bunch. Um... Because half the time, you'll get to counter their spell and pick up your pack of negation, for example. Uh, and if you have something like Krark's Thumb out, well, you can have even more control over what's going on. Access to Black gives you all the tutors that you need to set this stuff up. So if you just don't have a doubler, but you're in a spot where a doubler is really valuable, you know, you can Demonic Tutor for it. You can Tainted Pact. You can Wish Claw Talisman. Sometimes those are going to get win conditions. Sometimes they're going to get doubled and get two parts of a combo. Sometimes they're going to set up something like go get Krark's thumb and then try to go off that way. Um, so this is a little bit of a hybrid between a Grixis deck that's just trying to go off without regard to what the commanders are doing and a Krark Sakashima deck that's really leaning into Krark. This is somewhere in the middle. Um, I've only played two games with it so far, not on Moto, but on the paper version. I, I won one of the games, so, so far so good. Um, and I don't know, we're at 2 minutes and 35 seconds, so what else would I say about the list? Well, in case you haven't seen a Krark deck yet, this thing's pretty cool. Whenever you win a coin flip, create two treasure tokens. So this, in addition to Krark's thumb, making it easier to win those coin flips, you have tools like this that will just build to your board. And stuff like Roaming Throw. Now, there's another copier, there's basically another version of Harmonic Prodigy called prodigy called Varen. That's coming to Magic Online very soon, but it's not here yet. It's part of a commander precon for the next set, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So it'll be here soon, but right now I'm playing Roaming Throne. In paper, I have that card because it costs three. On Magic Online right now, I've got Roaming Throne, which costs four. I mean, not a huge deal. Not a reason not to play it, but I'll, I will swap that out 
um, when the Varen comes out, if I'm still playing this deck. Some new additions from Lord of the Rings, Orcus Bowmasters, Born Upon the Wind. You'll see a lot of my decks, everyone's decks that are blue-black containing those cards. Um, I'm not going to bore you with a, a card by card of every single card. You don't see a card like Force of Negation necessarily. There's some cards that are kind of rough to get bounced, to only, that, to only have work half the time. Something that's high investment, but you don't necessarily have the resources to do it over and over again. So it's like, yeah, Pack the Negation is good in some spots, but with Kark out, it gets kind of rough. And so you'd rather reach for something like a Red Elemental Blast. At least you can sort of reinvest the one red plus you maybe you could blow up two blue permanents if you are going after a risk study maybe you're also gonna get a remora or someone's commander so there's just like a, a few things sometimes some people don't even play like a cyclonic rip in a deck like this because if you do get up to seven mana and overload it well it doesn't do anything when copied extra except become harder to stop i still think it's worth it because the cheap mode is still there, and if you do go up to seven mana, you may not have Kark out, or you can just win the flip, and then some, the table is going to need two permission to stop you, so you know you can still go for it there. But all right, I haven't fired it yet. I'm going to hit pause and then start recording again once the once the queue fires. Okay, uh, looks like we've got opponents. Let's see what we've got. Sisse, Dehada. Tim Necrom. Okay. None of this looks like a non CDH commander deck and no one's lost. Okay. Uh, let's get underway. So, who goes first? Uh, it looks like I'm last. Okay. So, I've got Mox Diamond, one land. Not ideal. Chrome Mox, one colored spell. Not ideal. I suppose I'm likely to draw either a spell or a land and be able to drop my talisman. I'm going to mulligan. Okay. Yeah, this is going to serve us better. We've got Ancient Tomb. We could potentially have four mana on the turn one. Yeah, we'll keep this one. It doesn't have a payoff yet, but I got some, I got some action in the command zone. Um, all right. Some chatter. I like it. The deck keeps performing. Nice. I want to see the list. All right. I can't complain about the pace of play since I just took forever to set up my stream and log in my first time. Anyone who hasn't seen these commanders, uh, these are what I would call tier one ish commander. Dehada is non blue, but it's it's fast. It's good. If if you know if you know what's up, um, it can be really powerful. There's like a Zane list that he liked. Um, Sisse is just like one of the best commanders, Tim Necrom, and these are like in the three or four best decks you can play if they're the CDH versions. Little gemstone. So everyone sort of kept their opener. Yeah. I'm going to need to take this beginning of combat stop off for everybody. This is not the format where I'm going to need that. May take me a little bit to figure out the right visuals and the right stops and all that stuff. Um, I'm, my settings are 1v1, so bear with me here. You're on video one. We're going to learn together. I do have my hotkeys, which I believe still work. So F6, F8. I could just F8 right now, but don't really want to telegraph that I don't have permission. Yeah. Mana Crypt. That's a powerful card. Did this player mulligan to two? Or I mean to four? Okay. I didn't so this person kept seven, this person kept seven with Soul Ring. Okay. Normally when I'm playing over webcam, I can just sort of tell where people ended up because it takes so long to mulligan, but I forgot on online, you actually have to look because they could easily have mulliganed to four very quickly, which is what happened. So it's a wheel. Yeah, I thought that might be a wheel and I'm not happy about it. Seat three wheeling when you're in the fourth seat is 
about the worst thing that could happen in a game of CDH, roughly. Well, it could be worse, I'm going to say. It could be better, but it could be worse. I don't love that I have no acceleration here uh, on turn one. Uh, so I'm just going to be sitting here hoping nobody's going to get paid on their seven. Well, all right. Check that. Okay. Cast my soul ring. Um, we have one. We have like everybody's a dockside deck. I don't have like a. Con I'm just gonna hold the LED. I don't think it's worth just ramming it out there. I'll wait on that. All right. Soaring was a good draw. It doesn't really solve the problem of not having any interaction or go for this turn. It would have been, I mean, not, not the Doctor hasn't even on yet. So it's sort of, the problem is the still the problem, but obviously like Soaring's good, but it's just not ideal that I'm going to de depend now on other players either not having it or interacting with each other. Not entirely unlikely. The Hada makes, does make it a little bit less likely. When you've got non-blue turbo, it just makes it, you know, that person more likely to win. They can't stop other players. Okay. Good thing Sissa is just dirtling there with a meal. That's good. It's not an artifact or enchantment, so it's not going to feed the dock side. Don't love that. Let me F6 through that turn. Okay. Lotus Petal helped. Could be sacked, but you never know. I'm interested to see how it's going to work when it's time to like make a deal. Are people going to be receptive to that in chat? Is it going to work? I have no idea. Obviously, like you can communicate a lot easier when you're over the table. Oh, webcam, it's a little harder, but maybe. So this may be the, the hardest of those three. In-person, webcam, and moto. I'm typing in, hey, if you don't target my creature, and plus you can't, someone can't take it back. They can't say, hey, they have to type in, which you, I plan on doing if I do want to make a deal. I intend to source the plowshares your creature. Once they've already sourced it, I mean, there's no like, hey, this is a friendly game. You can take it back. I'll make a deal. So that aspect is certainly going to be harder. But I hope players get used to the motions there as time goes on. Good artifact. Mana Vault. Um, but the motions being, yeah, type in a chat. Hey, before I go ahead and use this spell, do you promise, can you back me up? Or what do you have? I mean, we'll see. See how it shakes out. Okay, Mana Vault go. So that player is representing their own ad nauseum on top of mine, interaction, who knows. Interaction could just be in the form of like silence type of effect since they're non-blue, but once they have two mana up, that dynamic changes a little bit because of stuff like silence. So it makes me a little bit more likely to go for like an ad nauseum not on my turn since silence doesn't stop me. It's a little bit unclear. Well, I'm pretty likely to play docs out of my turn. I don't know what I'm gonna follow it up with at this point. Esper Sentinel, yeah. I don't have to worry about remembering other people's mana crypts. Just more good stuff about online play. I can auto yield to Mystic Remora triggers if I want to at any point. Just some good stuff going on online. There's now two players that could have an opposition agent up might influence they don't, you don't operate at Verdant Catacombs anyway so but it might change the order or manner in which I do stuff let's see hmm okay I think I should start with just Dockside and then what color is floating not if I make a bunch of treasures I'm then City of Traders becomes potentially better than Verdant. So let's do that. Let's go. Dockside's going to make four or five treasures. 
Let's try it. Dock side extort. I gotta go. I gotta buy a real dock side. I don't like this art. But it should still work if it resolves. The art's not that bad. Okay, sack lotus pill or not? Is anyone trying to talk them into it? Okay, so you can already see something that's a little different. In paper, everyone's trying to convince you how important it is to sack your lotus petal and come on, man. <laughs> Don't just pass. This person just passed immediately. There's no chatter. So a little different there. Um, so City of Traders in theory gets me two mana, but because I have a colorless floating, that's not necessarily true. If I just, I'm gonna, it's still going to be one treasure to sack. I'll just have an extra. So I think it's actually verdant here. It's going to serve me better. Fetch up more underground. We'll go for Ristic here. Not paying for Esper Sentinel, which I don't, again don't have to remember. Always yield. There we go. Hopefully others are doing that as well. All right, we got Sackwood of Foothills. I don't love that. This could be Pyroblast for sure. For sure it could be, not for sure it is. Could just be something like a Lion Tutor. Don't want to pay the risk they got, I don't know. Well, Ritual's on. Being the first one to try to go off. Yeah, here's... Yuck. So... Yeah, there's the interaction from the non-blue deck. I don't really want to be the first one to try to go off. With Everyone's got full hands. They didn't do anything broken on their turn. I don't have any protection. I'm just going to say go. I should play LED now since other people's dock sides are already broken and I don't want to pay to feed the other thing. Okay. You can draw. Play LED. If the Sisse player has a dock side with their Emil, we may be in trouble, that's for sure. I don't have an upkeep stop on my turn, but I could always make one if I do end up with like a vampire tutor in my hand or something. I'm gonna need to remember to do that though. Fish. Mm. Is this a reason to go? This person's vamping or entombing. Feeding the Esper Sentinel. I don't think this is a reason to go yet. I want Dehada to go for it. I want the other players to. Ooh. Oppo. Well, that's going to be trouble. Interesting. So now, is there any chance I survive this whole cycle without... Now I think I should actually kind of go for... I don't know. I think I should now pop off. Let's see. Well, I just feel like it's going to... It's unlikely to get to my turn now. The, the Esper Sentinel player gets any card. They have a million mana. A million cards. They get the tutor from the Dehada deck. The Remora comes down. I think they're like pretty likely to win. They're tapped out. I 
I'm being asked ad nauseum time question mark. What's ad nauseum? I'm coming from casual <laughs> This is my casual oh, payment to prevent. I didn't realize it was on me. That's my fault. My fault, everybody. Okay, pass on my own at Cabal Rit. Five black. Hold control. Ad nauseum. Make three blue mana. All right, let's see who's got what. Let's see who's who. Do I wish to repeat this? Yeah, I'll repeat it. Mm-hmm, 36. Amora, Dark Ritual. I'm looking for Born Upon a Wind would be helpful. Wishka, SSG, Tainted Pact. Okay, so I have Dark Ritual, Tainted Pact. I'm almost at the point of having the Born. Tainted Pact is not the best way to find it. Okay, I can't even see the cards I'm getting anymore. Pact of Negation is helpful. Oh, is that Born Upon a Wind? Ooh. Hello. Hi there. So now I just keep going until I get to five life and then I stop. Okay, I just hit a five. So do you wish to repeat this? No. Oh, I got SWAT and so the submerge. Okay, so I'm going to go Dark Ritual. Oh, I have my, my mana floating too from the LED. So I've got, if you have any counters up, it's gas. Okay. So I will, and I've got my pack negation. Okay. So it's all over but the crying here, it looks like. I've got Yogmoth's Will. Eesh. Yeah, this one's done. It just about does her. Wraps her all up. Well, game one, unless I misclick or time out, we're going to be in good shape here. Oh, mind break trap. Okay, well, no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm sure I want to pack. Okay. Can I kill in 12 minutes? Probably. Probably going to figure this one out. Is Born Upon a Wind good? Why? Oh, there was some chance I wanted to... Oh, wait, I can cast the, the Horn of Harnfell? It's kind of sweet. Yeah, this one's done. I can tainted pack for anything I want. I can go get the Breach. Exile, I'm not going to cast him in the Spirit Guard, that's for sure. I have Wishclaw Talisman for Breach, and I've got LED in the Graveyard. Yeah, sure, that might be fastest. Is there a way to play around anything? If I put my commander in play to get these free spells up, then all of a sudden my stuff is like not guaranteed to resolve. I gotta think about this for a second. So, I've got seven mana, three, two, three. I've still got one more counter. I should Tainted Pack first. No, I should just Yogg Will. Wait. No, I should Tainted Pack. Okay, Tainted Pack first. Where's the window for Tainted Pack? Do you should put a little blast in your hand? No. Flooded Strand? No. 
Watery grave, no. Windfall, tempting as it may be, no. Thassa's Oracle. Um, it's gonna be. Um, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, I don't think my line was optimal. Um, I think I could have been more protected than I am. I'm gonna win pretty easily, but that was, I felt a little pressure on the clock that I wouldn't have felt necessarily, uh, you know, new interface, not to make excuses, but yeah, it's a little different for sure. Um, oh yeah, this is money. Oh, it just takes so long for it to get around the table. We were cooked. GG. Yeah, I mean, we are cooked if you're there. Cabal writ. Give me all the black mana. Give me the dark writ. And I could also chrome box, I could chain a vapor if I really want to go deep, but I've already got packed engaged and I don't, I don't want to, this is getting silly. So I'll just go ahead and put my Thassa's Oracle out there and put Tainted Pact on stack and response. Okay, imprint, submerge. I'm going to Play a I guess I should try to play around Angel's Grace. Nah, I'm just too lazy. I'm not playing around Angel's Grace. You got it, you got it. Oh crap. Okay, I got it. I was like I was about to learn the. I was like, I'm pretty sure you get to respond to your own triggers, and you, in fact, you do. And I just click no a million times. Okay, uh, it's you're gonna watch me click no, thirty something more times. I guess I want to stop though before I can talk about the last card in my hand, just in case. Very important stuff. Or I could leave, because I've got counters for removal, I could leave mo multiple cards just in case I get stopped. Nah. I'm not into that. I'll just go for the last card. I guess if the second to last card is like a Praetor's Grasp or something, I'll just keep that. Conqueror's Flail, no. Deadly Relic, no. Mana Confluence, no. Talisman of Creativity, no. Doesn't matter. Okay. That's my Tainted Pact. This is my Oracle Trigger. Okay. The last holdout who is bluffing the uh, Angel's Grace. All right. 1-0. A little introduction to CDH if it's new to you. Um, if not, I hope you enjoyed seeing it in a new place here on MTGO. I'm, I'm smiling ear to ear, not just because I won, because I've been waiting for this. Um, I've been wanting to put some YouTube videos up for CDH. It's really hard to coordinate over a webcam. Plus, you're talking to the camera, but you can't because you're trying to talk to the other players, let them know what's going on. So this is great. Hopefully, you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you very soon for the next one.